Pakura. My name is Mika Perho. Um, I come from Finland. And uh, I participated in the uh, <coughs> University of Tübingen and uh, Retina Implant RK study. Over the past couple of years, I've been pretty closely uh, closely uh, attached to the project lately. So today, uh, to what I first I'm gonna go quickly over my uh, retinal condition prior to, uh, to the uh, implantation. Then I'm gonna cover quite shortly some topics that I find important before you even start planning participation in any kind of a clinical study. There are a couple of things that are good to, uh, good to point out in my opinion. Then uh, after that, I will go over the basic test results that I did. I, I try to walk you through the whole process after I got implanted and when we started checking and testing and uh, adjusting the device so you get a little better idea how it was to use it. And then uh, just finally I wrap my presentation up about some comments how I felt about participating in everything. So uh, I know it's early in the morning, hopefully I'm gonna I'm not gonna be that boring that you will fall back to sleep. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I was implanted like three and a half years ago, so I don't have a chip anymore. I uh, just want to mention that in the right beginning. Uh, about first about my retinal <coughs> condition, I was uh, diagnosed. I, I got the first symptoms when I was like 16, 17 years old. Just a poor night vision, like everyone has. <coughs> and then. Uh, a little by little, things started getting worse and worse, but very slowly, very gradually. I think I was diagnosed <coughs> just like four or five years later. And uh, my case of RP, <coughs> it all started in the very center of my eye, in the very middle. And then from the center, it started going outbound. So it's kind of like an inverse case, not the most difficult case. But after like uh, after the first symptoms, then about 10 years later, when I was like 26, something like that, then I pretty much lost the reading ability on my left eye. My left eye went down first. Right eye was still pretty good. I was able to drive a car until I was 28. And then I was like uh, about 10 more years from the left eye, then I also lost the reading ability in my right eye. And I was about 35, 36. So it's about 11 years ago, so now you can calculate <laughs> how old I am. <laughs> so anything from the first symptoms to the losing the left eye, about 10 years, another 10 years, and then it was my right eye. So after I lost the reading ability on my right eye, a couple of years later I heard about this uh, University of Tübingen retinol and subretinol chip project and sounded interesting. I volunteered. There was no eye doctor between me and the project. I just picked up the phone, I called them and I asked, and I got in. <clears throat> Not that easy, but after a couple of phone calls and then after meetings. And, but they were like, you know, I really did it individually, just all by myself. Then when I became eligible, I was implanted in uh, November of 2008. So it's almost about, about half, three and a half years ago. But first, before I go to the uh, implantation process and the testing, then I just want to mention a couple of things in order to get ready for the uh, participations. And I think probably the most important thing in my mind, before you even start thinking, you have to determine if you are the right kind of a person to go into it. And of course, there's no test to measure it. People can answer whatever they want. But I think the very key things is kind of like that. You have to be curious. Like you really have to be like, you know, to be willing to look around a corner to see what's there. And uh, not to be afraid for the change. 
And then, so you gotta be ready to, in order to step out of your comfort zone. And be competitive. I think I would like to emphasize this, like, you know, kind of a personality that, okay, I wanna check it out. I don't care if it helps me, I don't know what's gonna happen, and, but I'm still curious. I wanna do it for the science, I don't wanna do it all, only for myself. I think that really helps. Okay, now all of you are gonna be, yes, yeah, <coughs> everybody's curious, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> but no, it's not really that. I mean, when I thought about it, like the vast majority of people I've ever met, I've ever known, they, perhaps they don't have this kind of like a will to step out of their comfort zone. It's easy to say, but it's much more difficult to do. The change, we all are afraid like, you know, to change our work, change the companies, because we don't know exactly what's going to be ahead of us. We are afraid of change. Everything is comfortable in our lives, so we don't want to take another step. And that's why I emphasize that this kind of personality, it's important to uh, participate in any kind of clinical study. Gene therapies, possible stem cells, not for your own benefit, but mainly for the science. I would emphasize that, but of course, that's only my opinion. It's nothing official. I'm just talking about how I feel about it. But I can come back to this a little bit later. Then other important things to ask before you enter the clinical study would be just the very basic questions like, you know, how much time is it gonna take? How many months should I prepare myself for if I have to go to a different country or even to a different uh, town or city? Who's gonna take care of my accommodation? Do I stay in a hotel? Do I stay in a hospital? And uh, especially if you stay in a hotel, important question is, is there somebody from the project who's gonna help you? Like come and pick you up every morning and take you, for example, to any institution or university, whoever is uh, handling the clinical study. And then of course, if you're working, you want to know beforehand that is somebody compensating your time? Like if you're losing money without, without not working, then perhaps you want to know if somebody's compensating anything. Are your travel costs covered? What about your food? What about your red wine, your beer, <laughs> whatever? <laughs> I mean, those basic questions. It's good to know in advance. But usually, of course, all those all those uh, typical questions will be answered when you enter the project, people tell you. But uh, it's good to think about those, those things even before you make a decision that I want to apply for the clinical study. And especially, I just want to last time I want to emphasize, be curious. Be ready to look around the corner. And just like willingness to know like what's around the corner. And if you don't have that, then I think it's better not to enter, because then you will not get enough out of it. Okay, then about the study. Studies, so I was implanted in November of 2008. Long operation, six hours about, no big deal. I was fully asleep, I didn't know anything about it. I woke up, and four days later, returned the chip on. So it was pretty, pretty shortly after uh, the operation. The very first impression that I had was just a flash of lights in the very center of my eye. I didn't know what it was, but it was right there, but I had not seen anything for the past about 15 years on my left eye. So I was able to focus on something. And then a little by little, I would take a matter of hours of course, the chip was not on 24 hours a day. It was only on a couple of hours a day. A little by little, everything started making more sense. First, I started looking at the uh, things on a computer screen. Straight lines, easy figures, vertical lines, horizontal lines, tilted ones. And I was just asked, like, how many lines do I see? What direction they are? 
okay